Hey guys, so that was my flea market haul. I have to like put these cards away soon. Now I'm gonna show you my modern deck. I love this modern deck. It is my favorite deck of all time to play. I don't have the pieces yet because I just haven't found temples. One waste, uh, I'm supposed to get four temples, Adrazi temples, a castle, a castle is kind of getting expensive now. Four caves. Everything's kind of, yeah, four caves. Four vents. Four ghost quarters, and you'll see why we have ghost quarters later. And four godless shrines. So it is a black, white, Adrazi. I call it hate bears because it allows me to play Falia, but and it, the most important two cards are actually bears, meaning they cost two. So that is your land base. Your creature base is four Displacers, four Seers, four Reality Smashers, two Flicker Wisp, four Falias, which I love playing and sees the most important card in this deck, in my opinion. Uh, four Arbiters, and then four Tide Hollows. So the deck essentially runs a lot of, it just runs a ton of creatures. The only non-creatures in the deck are Thoughtseize and Path to Exiles. The paths are extremely good when you have your Arbiter because then you don't give them land. <laughs> essentially it's a free card. Thoughtseize is great to take Lightning Bolt, things that are going to kill your creatures, which is pretty much everything in red. These are it, the two drops. So let's go over the two drops. You're mainly a creature base, and by the time you hit two, you are a creature base deck because your Thought Seize should have launched turn one, and then your Path to Exile gains benefit once it hits turn two and you can drop an Arbiter. So Filiars, not much I need to say about her except there's, I always want to play her in a deck. She is $10 right now, which is a fantastic price given the fact that she used to be two. I mean, yeah, you could say she's eight, but I mean, it's closer to 10. Arbiters, they are getting somewhat pricey nowadays, but they're very good. Ghost Quarter, Path to Exile, and then the fact that most people play fetch lines anyway makes it an extremely beneficial card. Tide Hollow Scholar, again, a fantastic, fantastic card. I forgot you have a playset of Spell Skype main board. What I'm afraid of is I'm afraid of very fast decks, and that is Boggle and Infect, because that's my meta right now. Flicker Wisp, and I'll draw four, I'll draw two of those. Four Adrazi Displacers, very, very good in this deck. It definitely resets and allows you to give your opponent back cards that they that you took away from them previously, but you don't you no longer need currently. So four reality smashers. Love the card. And four seers. So they're very, very good. Extremely Adrazi ramp. Except your ramp isn't that good, so you need to rely on your hate bears. Next, you have four Stony Silence, four Kataki's Wars Wage, four Core Firewalkers. Again, the one deck I hate playing against is Mono Red Burn, because you're slow and they're fast, and you know, if af after you get down your Seer and your after you get him down, turn four or maybe hopefully turn three, you just win the game. But this guy keeps you alive until then. Relic and then Revoker. So it's a pretty basic deck. I like it. It plays fun. I gotta get my Adrazi Temples. But outside of getting my Adrazi Temples, which should be relatively easy to get, uh, it is just a fantastic deck. Highly recommend building it. And it's extremely cheap right now. It's not only cheap. Being cheap is one part of the equation. The other part of the equation is how easy can you trade into it. Uh, most of the cards are extremely easy to trade into. Relic got reprinted. Stonely Signs might be... The sideboard is sideboard. That's, you don't even need to worry about it. Most times I don't even know how it works. These are extremely easy to trade for. 
smashers. I mean, half the stuff is already in standard. Spouse guides are pricey, but not insane. They're not like fetch lands. The reason this deck is not expensive, as expensive as other decks, is the land base is relatively inexpensive. You have your four temples, you have one of these, you have four shrines, four vents, which again, all of these are in standard right now. The shrines are not, but four caves, one of these, and four ghost quarters, which are uncommon. Your thought seized is extremely cheap as a speculation right now. And then your path to exiles. As a whole, the deck is just not expensive because you don't have Mars Flats. You don't need Mars Flats. Mars Flats is actually not good because you're trying to prevent people from fetching, which would include you as well. Overall, the deck plays very well. It's a very easy deck to understand. You play creatures and then you protect your creatures and then you attack. So it's kind of like a bigger version of Red Deck Wins, but it's a lot more fun because you have more options and Again, you're trying to stabilize. There's a lot of things you can do to try to stabilize the game. Love the deck. Really suggest making it, mainly because the price point and the tradeability. Price point is an issue, but if the cards are cheap and no one's willing to trade them or no one has them, then what's the point? So definitely most of these cards, half the deck right now is tradable, half the deck is in standard. This card is seeing, this type of deck is seeing a lot of play in Modern and seeing a lot of play in Legacy. And even most importantly, seeing a ton of play in Vintage, which tells me, ding, 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 this is actually not a bad speculation in terms of a deck holding its value. Or a deck being tier one or tier two or being playable for a long time. So if I move from Modern to Legacy, the pieces still exist. The cards that I would norm, I would be putting in that deck the Adrazi in particular would already, I would have them. The same with Vintage. So I love this deck for exactly that reason. Bye guys.